Hey everybody. Driving. So it might be a little bouncy. Got my phone in a holder. Um, I've, I've get requests just so often um, from friends who want me to go live more often and the truth is <laughs> I look like this most of the time because I like to work. I have, I basically, we have a farm and, and a lot of property and uh, I love driving equipment and you know I've, I've gone live on some of my uh, tractors in the past, but um, some people say that it isn't very appropriate for somebody who's running for Congress. I, I just feel like uh, if we keep electing people who look like they fit the right role, then we're probably going to keep getting the results that we've been getting. So, um, I saw a video just a few minutes ago of a church, if you want to call it that, in Texas that was, uh, the entire church was reciting this statement, uh, in terms of, it was all about inclusivity of, you know what? And so uh, it was just interesting because first of all, they, they look and they come across almost like zombies, which is uh, it's sad for human beings to come across that way. But there's a bigger picture here that I want to talk about. And uh, it's actually, this is the thing that comes to mind for me for this. And, and there's even a deeper level to this, which I'll talk about in a second. But first of all, we have... Um, we have a bunch of people in a church dressed up in drag, fully makeup, totally costumed out. Uh, and, and I, and I use the word costume purposely. Uh, when you put on a costume, it means you're, you're attempting to be something that you're not. And, uh, they, it's interesting to me how little people time spend actually worshiping or praying to God, uh, but yet we're going to take time in a in a church to recite this, you know, statement of inclusivity, essentially. Um, so, but the big thing here is that these folks are in church, which just seems so ironic to me, because. They just do nothing but lambast the church. They're just totally against church. They're against any kind of organized religion. And this was a Catholic church, uh, by the looks of it, which is is totally against everything that they stand for. So it's just odd to me that they they have to barge in there and make this scene essentially uh, essentially making themselves feel welcome. Which you know they're human beings. They're welcome anywhere on this planet last time I checked. Um, it, it's the same thing uh, with a lot of this social stuff that's going on. The, the truth is, is that it's, it's just, God has given us a set of, you can call them rules, you can call them guidelines, you can call it whatever you want, but it's a, it's a way of living that leads to happiness. And I don't know of anybody that's perfect at it, but I do know that the people that are are standing against the normalization of things that are not normal and are not healthy are primarily standing against those things for two reasons. Number one, it's not good for the person that is demonstrating it. And number two, it's not good for our culture, including our kids, to grow up in a world where that sort of behavior is normalized without the preface that it is clearly the antithesis to what God intends for us to live because we have lots of freedom to live how we want. And last I checked, there's nobody on the right who's telling anyone uh, that they can't do or live however they want. The issue is that the people that are doing these things and that they're thrusting these these things on the rest of the world are, uh, let, let's just step back for a second. When I was a kid in the 80s, I remember 
this time where it was this period when we're, we're, there was a lot of people coming out of the closet. Like, it's a term that was used. And the response from this group of people, you can call them conservatives if you want, Christians if you want, America is a Christian nation. Just look at our foundation, look at our formation, look at our founding fathers, our founding documents. The Constitution is based on the thing called our natural rights, which come from God and apply to all humanity. We just are lucky enough to live in a country where our, uh, our rights, our natural rights, which come from God, are documented in a Constitution. So the Constitution is submissive to our natural rights from God. And so, uh, back to my point, um, where was I at? So, so, so these, so there's this group of people that are wanting to influence other people for good. And they see this idea of these people coming out, um, and trying to normalize things that aren't normal as a negative influence. It's not good for them. It's not good for our culture. It's not good for our kids. And so if you look back over four decades now, four or five decades ago, when, when this, I, I guess, in our era, I guess, so to speak, it's not like this, uh, these uh, types of lifestyle, alternate lifestyles were not happening in any other time in history. Uh, read Ecclesiastes. It's just this, this spinning wheel. Uh, it, so our expression of the coming out phase was in the 70s and 80s, I guess. And maybe that's just when I experienced it because I was born in 69 and so that was kind of my teen years or whatever. So what did they ask? What did the people who were coming out of the closet ask? What, what was their request at the time? Essentially, it was, please accept us. Please let us do what we want to do. And what was everyone's response for the most part? I mean, there's, there's always extremes, but... Generally, people are like, eh, okay, well, do, well, do whatever you want. We don't think it's probably the best for you, but we're not going to condemn you for it. It's not illegal, you know, but okay. So fast forward four decades, five decades, and now, now what are they saying? Well, it's no longer a request for acceptance, it's now a demand for endorsement. So now they're demanding that we fund, support, promote, allow, and that crosses the line for a lot of people. And so the reaction is going to be very different. I would probably have never, we didn't have live back then, we didn't have the internet back then, but I probably never would have gone on a live video and talked about this publicly because it was just, they're just asking for acceptance. Now, if we were really smart and we were looking at history, we probably would have seen where this was going and we probably should have, honestly. Maybe some people did. Uh, so now we have this situation where they're demanding endorsement and endorsement versus acceptance are very different. Demanding acceptance, demanding endorsement, those are also very different. And so the reaction is gonna be very different. And so we live, we live in this situation where that that's kind of what we're faced with so here, here's the other thing it kind of goes back to this whole church thing is you think about the whole marriage fight if you want to call it that uh the bible's very clear about all this stuff uh god designed marriage we can talk for a long time about this Marriage is God's tool for us to be able to understand our relationship with him better. That is the primary purpose for marriage. God designed marriage to be between a man, a male, and a female. And there are both physical and chemical or chemistry, biological reasons why we're designed that way, aside from the obvious. Um, but the bigger picture is, is that marriage is, is a tool for us to be able to 
understand our relationship with God more. Our relationship with our spouse is unique, intended to be unique to any other relationship with any other person on the planet. Similarly, our relationship to God personally is different than any other relationship to anything, human, spiritual, anything. Our relationship to God is very unique. It's one. And uh, God wants us to be one. God wants us to be unified. In a similar way, um, how God puts a man and a woman together, both physically and uh, in other ways. The physical part is important, though, because it, it further signifies, it further confirms God's intent to have a unique relationship between those two people, that man and that woman, versus any other person on the planet. It is both inclusive and exclusive. It's purposeful in that. Uh, so my point with that, that marriage thing and then with this whole lifestyle thing, which is obvious, just read your Bible and hundred different places it'll tell you that um, you know God's God has a tent it has an intent um, it doesn't it, you know, I have to be very clear with this once again this is not condemning any human being in any way I don't think that God's love does not and cannot extend to them uh, in the same way that it does to anybody else uh, nor should us as humans get caught up in this judgment in terms of just being um, rude or mean or ridiculing or, or um, anything other than lovingly holding these people accountable with a desire to see their best come out. And, and that, that's, that's the thing. I, mean, I, I think that's our, if you talk to anybody who disagrees with these objectives, what it's almost, I think, almost universally agreed that the, if you really study it, the core of the reason why is because they don't believe that that will produce the best results for that person in their life, and they don't like the examples socially and for our culture. So, here's my point. If it wasn't based in some kind of anti-God uh, mechanism, thinking, perspective, really being, ultimately being against God, maybe, and I guess I would go as far as to say, evilly driven. You know, there is evil spirits. They, there's examples of those all through the Bible. Um, and I think we're seeing examples of them today. My point is, like, I, I, I believe, let me just give you another example, is all wars are ultimately about God. It's all about power and control, and usually wars in their, at their core are started. Now today we have corruption, which is all about power, which still is ultimately about God, because they would rather worship that power and that authority rather than submit to God. Gosh, our country is so full of corruption, it's ridiculous. Similarly, uh, in regards to this, this isn't really about just being able to live how someone wants to live. It's bigger than that. It, it's a spiritual battle because if it was just a matter of people wanting to live the way they want to live, they wouldn't be in a church reciting some uh, statement of inclusivity. They would just completely abandon and, and ignore and uh, rebuff all things religious, including the church and including people of faith who are honestly trying to pray for them and to help them. But no, they want to be included in the midst of, of that, even though the things that they're doing are completely the antithesis of it. And um, that's the part that's confusing. Why, why do people want to be able to, people of the same sex, for example, want to be able to get married, why do they have to use that terminology? That comes straight from the Bible. It comes straight from God. Just call it getting unified, or I don't know what you call it. Call it whatever you want. Do whatever you want. But don't bastardize what God has created 
by using the same term. And that's the reason why I think it's spiritual. I think that they're trying to uh, delegitimize our entire faith. Uh, it's the same thing with uh, sexual promiscuity. Regardless of what it is, they want it all to be accepted. They want it to be okay. They want to know they can they can walk into church and they can flaunt it. And they're welcome to walk into church, and they should always be told you're loved. God loves you. But they should also be saying, just like any of the rest of us, all of us are sinners. They should also hear, um, I love you, but I don't love your sin. I don't love the way that you're trying to circumvent God in your life. Sin is a false idol, always. It's false idol worship. God's made us to worship. We choose false idols. We, we live them out. We all do it. Some of them are socially acceptable. Some of them are not. Some of them are evil and trying to change our culture, and some of them are just personal. So, I'll end it there. It's probably I probably talked longer than I had intended to or, or planned on, but I wanted to try out this, uh, this YouTube Live thing so then I can share it with other people and uh, probably see if I end up getting ejected for some reason. But uh, that's what happens, unfortunately, is... I got kicked off of Twitter. I'm totally shadow banned on Facebook. So people don't see my content. And uh, it, it, it's effective because it discourages me from creating content. It discourages me from speaking out. And uh, that's that's bad. That's, that's, not, that's not the way we, that's not the America that I grew up in. And so uh, I will, uh, stand up and strengthen myself and stand in the face of it until I'm uh, forced to just stand on the street corner and talk to whoever will stop. Uh, so anyway, God bless you. I uh, appreciate your comments. I certainly have no intent of uh, uh, offend offending anyone, but I also am not going to remain quiet just because it might offend some people. So God bless you.